everyone, it's uh, Daisy Griffin, author of Samantha Loses the Box Turtle, back again for day two of our social distancing to read chapter two. Um, in chapter one, Samantha and her little sister Sophie were out with her grandparents when they found a turtle in the road. They brought it home and now Samantha's waiting to see what her mom says. So let's see what happens. Chapter 2, Greenish Brown Rock Gran was still keeping her distance as Samantha begged her mom to say she could play with the turtle. What a lovely surprise, Mom said. But your Gran was right to be careful. Let's just see what we have here. Mom tried to hide her amusement as she gently untangled the turtle from the now mangled plastic bag. She looked closely all over the turtle, examining his head legs and shell completely. Samantha suspected her mom was mostly concerned about making sure he wasn't hurt. After the inspection, her mom said, he looks quite healthy and he's definitely an eastern box turtle. Hasn't tried to bite either. Girls, you may keep an eye on him while I get the box ready. Sophie reached up and tried to grab the turtle from their mom before Samantha could, but mom was too smart for that. Uh-uh-uh, we aren't going to get into a fight over who holds the turtle. Let the little guy walk around. He's probably more comfortable on the floor anyway. Samantha and Sophie both groaned, ugh, but sat down with their legs spread out across from each other and their feet touching with the turtle in the middle. At first, he just sat there. Sat there like a brownish green rock. Once he became the subject of scrutiny, the turtle pulled its head's legs and even its tail up into its shell. There was absolutely no movement at all. Just then, they heard, Turtle! Turtle! Mom had just unstrapped their baby sister from the high chair and let her loose. Michelle toddled over to see the turtle. Before they could stop her, she had gone right over their protective leg barrier and started poking at the closed up turtle. silly said Samantha turtle not scared he thinks you want to eat them so he's hiding in his shell I know eat turtle Blech! Michelle declared as she stuck out her tongue in disgust just then Michelle saw that Grampy was sitting down with a bag of chips so she left the still quiet turtle in favor of more promising rewards slowly just when Samantha and Sophie were starting to get bored of watching the box turtle started to peek out from his shell. He let his head and legs come out and had only taken one step before Sophie reached over and grabbed him. The head and legs disappeared instantly. Sophie, you scared him, said Samantha. Oops, I thought he was ready to play with me, grinned Sophie. Next time, don't touch him, okay? Okay. It didn't take quite as long this time for the box turtle to unbox. Sophie made a move to grab him, but Samantha glared at her, and she sat on her hands sheepishly. Both sisters waited to see what he would do. Samantha hoped that he would walk over to her after he had been out for a few seconds and no one touched him. The box turtle started walking. Fast. He did his little turtle run right into Samantha's legs and started trying to climb it. Sophie looked ready to burst to try to get him to crawl on her. Samantha tried not to gloat, but she couldn't help the smile that pulled at the corners of her mouth. Sophie would get her chance later, but the turtle crawled to Samantha first. When he started being successful in his attempts to climb, Samantha gently picked him up and turned him in the other direction. By then, the turtle seemed to understand that the girls weren't really going to hurt him and only pulled his head in a little bit when she touched him. As soon as he was on the floor, he was off to a run again. The girls played Guess Who the Turtle Will Tag Next until their mom came back with one of the large plastic bins that usually held out of season clothes in the attic. Now, instead of clothes, the bottom of it was covered with a deep layer of pine straw from their backyard. Why'd you put so much pine straw in there? He's gonna get lost, Sophie asked their mom. 
That's the point, Mom replied. Box turtles like to burrow or dig down in the leaves and pine straw. It keeps them hidden from predators that would eat them and keeps them warmer. He'll feel safer if he can dig down. But then I won't be able to see him. He's already safe here. I don't think he needs the pine straw, Sophie whined. Samantha knew her mom was right, and she wanted the turtle to be happy. You are safe in your bed, too, but you still wouldn't want to sleep without Purple Bunny, would you? Sam told her. Sophie was quiet after that. She never, ever slept without Purple Bunny. All right, that is the end of chapter two. Join me tomorrow for chapter three.